how are you? Shall we study Bible together? <laughs> All right. Uh, before we do, shall we pray? Father in heaven, please teach us your word. Thank you. Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Now, uh, now today we're going to study the uh, book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 4 to 9. The title I gave is the uh, part of the body of Christ. Now, um, as you may know, the many people uh, divide the book of Romans in like a two part. The first is from chapter 1 to chapter 11. And the second half is start from chapter 12 until the end, the chapter 16. Um, just to summarize what was writing about the first half with, until chapter 11. And if I summarize it, that would say that Paul tried to tell us what is correct gospel or correct thinking. We as a Christian, what we ought to think. And uh, that's including the, uh, how we should think about the relationship with the church, with Israel. And so that is the first half until chapter 11. Paul's really telling us how, what is the correct thinking or correct gospel. And from the chapter 12 and until end, Paul's kind of telling us that what is the correct uh, living. We as a Christian, how should we live our Christian life? And the last week, we learned the first three verses of the chapter 12. And on that first three verses, the Paul really talked about that we should leave from this world and we should really uh, give ourselves to God as a living sacrifice. It's really the center that we should put the God in our center of our Christian life. And then, from today, the verse uh, 40, uh, 45, I mean, verse 4, the following, the, the, the part we're going to learn is Paul going to explain more like a detail how we should really sacrifice ourselves to God or how we should live the Christian life. Uh, let me start reading uh, the uh, verse 4 and 5. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Wow, that's very interesting verse. Uh, Paul uh, really talked about something about body. Now, and the question is, whose body he's talking about? And as we read uh, the verse 5, that uh, we can tell he really wanted to say the body that he's talking about is the uh, body of Christ. And, uh, let me ask you, what happened to the body of Christ? <laughs> well, you know, first things that um, uh, he was crucified uh, and then cru uh, he went up on the cross and uh, the soldier, uh, you know, speared him and then uh, he was beaten. So his physical body was totally bruised and totally, uh, uh, you know, then, then he, he died. He 100%, his physical body went to the uh, 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 tomb and he, 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 was, he was dead. But three days later, that he resurrected. So Jesus' body, not glorified body, it is still, it is a living body. It is not dead, it's alive. And, uh, and also glorified body. That's what the Jesus body now. And apparently, he tried to tell us that we Christian, and he also here said that we are many, uh, so many Christian get together as a one body, the form, the body of Jesus, body of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, the word church with ecclesia uh, in um, uh, Greek word, which means it's a, like a gathering, it's all like a group. So, as many Christians get together, that's really mean church. And um, as we get together, and uh, as we have a group of Christians, and that is the church, that Paul really telling us, we are body 
of Christ. And um, now that is a very, very interesting. Now, indeed, that he also said that each one of us is a different uh, uh, part of the body. Uh, and, and our physical body, we have uh, many parts. And um, one of the characteristics of our physical body is um, every part of our body is uh, necessary to function correctly. Do you know, uh, it, it was about six months ago, I had back pain so bad, I had a hernia. And I went to the doctor. Do you know what the doctor told me? The doctor said, Oh, Kenji, just wait for about three months or four, your pain will go away. But I had to go through the pain. I know he gave me some medicine to ease the pain, but have you heard the hernia before? It's exclusive. It is. It is. It is crazy pain. And one of the things I noticed when my back hurts so bad, I cannot even put put my pants up. I mean, it used to be putting the clothes is so easy, but just putting the you know uh, clothes on that alone is very difficult. What I'm saying is this: that um, our bodies. If the one part of the body is, uh, is not functioning well, uh, we will lose the ability, we will lose full ability to be the healthy and then, um, you know, a cheerful. We, 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 the, the all other part of the body, we think about the only one part of the body, that, that is really like a church. Church, if it's the only one part of the church, the group of people or one individual maybe, it's not healthy Christians where it's kind of like a, in a being sick or kind of like a weak or in trouble. The entire church, we concern and we pray and it hurts us, every one of us. And not only that, um, if there's problems uh, in the church, that we as a church cannot function good as could. And um, that is a really uh, like that's what the body is all about. And then, and then one thing I can say is uh, uh, the church, within the church, we cannot say that uh, other part of the body, telling other part of the body say, we don't need you kind of things. Like you cannot say, oh, you know, like my right arm say, hey, left arm, you look like me, so uh, you don't, we don't need you. <laughs> we cannot do that. But there, I give you some example that uh, this actually happened when I was in the church in the U.S. Uh, there was a group of ladies. They complained that, uh, that about the one family coming to our church at that time, and then that family had uh, you know uh, the two boys, uh, the high school and the junior high school boys, and they eat a lot. You know, some American kids eat a lot, <laughs> and then these lady complained that that family, they even, they don't give almost no uh, tithing. Uh, see, U.S., you can tell who's tithing uh, by, because every, just about everyone uh, gave the, uh, uh, you know, offering with a check. And in the check, there's a name on it. So, uh, I, I don't, I, I know this is, a, this may be not the healthy way of thinking, but uh, many American churches, you can tell how much the, each family or each person uh, giving to the church. You, you, the, this particular family, um, the, uh, those ladies, uh, they knew they don't give uh, almost no offering, but then they eat a lot, and especially the boys. So they complain that they say, I wish, we wish that family even don't come to church. They, they gonna, they eat too much and they, you know, other person cannot have a chance to eat. And those boys, they, I heard that, is, oh man, ladies, come on, this is a church. You cannot say, oh, that family shouldn't come. Or, that, that's, I, 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 I was so surprised that they say. But then, one day we had an event and those boys, that that they they helped the ladies from the you know from the minivan to bring that the, the like a food or like all that to the location of the our events and those guys helped uh, ladies uh, from carry from the minivan and after that is uh, yeah, after that 
No one complained about that family. All of a sudden, the, those ladies who complained, they would say, Oh, they are very nice boys. <laughs> they so changed. But oh, I guess the bottom line is the you know, we church, we need each other. And every one of us is a part of the physical body, part of the uh, Jesus body. And um, we cannot say that you don't need us or you don't have to come to church. Or some people say, I wish he don't come to a church. You cannot say such a things at all. That's not the body of Christ. Now, let's move on to uh, next verse, verse 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesizing, then prophecy in accordance with your faith. Now, the verse 6 is very interesting. The first Paul saying that each one of us are part of Jesus' physical body and then we are have a different function. And uh, all the, the, the things we can do is actually it's a, came from the gift from God. See, uh, the, the, and then he was saying that we should use that gift. Now, why do you think God gave us those gifts so that we can do the uh, work for the church? Uh, let me read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. It says this, There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one it is the same God at work. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Now that is a very interesting thing. What the Bible says is that each each one of us in the church have a different functions and different gift and give actually give different uh, uh, talent that we have, uh, ability that we have, different ability we have. And uh, for the reason for that is for, for common good, for, for us to uh, help each other, serve each other and um, the Every one of us is different, and we help each other to for our good. And then, and then let me give you another verse, First uh, Peter, chapter four, verse ten. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, as faithful steward of God's grace in its various forms. Now that is also explained that we as a Christian. Uh, we should serve each other. Do you remember uh, when Jesus was meeting with the disciple and he started to wash uh, their feet? And the Peter told Jesus, say, Oh, Lord, you shouldn't do that. But Jesus continued. And then, do uh, you know what Jesus said after that? I mean, after he washed the, each disciple's feet, uh, let me read John chapter 13, verse 14. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one other's feet. Now that is a very clear uh, statement or indication that what Jesus ex expect us to do in the church. In the church, we should wash each other's feet. See, in a church setting, the, there's no one is you know, uh, above or below, everyone's the same. Everyone's uh, 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 brother and sisters. No one's greater, no one's uh, less. And if we have to say there's a one boss, that's Jesus. He's the only one above us. And then all of us are equal in the church. And um, that's why the, the, we have a different function. And every one of us is different. Every one of us have a different ability, and we should serve each other. And that's basically what the Paul talking about. That's very, very interesting. Um, you know, if if there's a fighting in a church, that doesn't make sense. You cannot. If I start to say, okay, my 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 right arm say, oh, I don't like your head. Ouch! 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 Or if if I uh, both my arms say, oh, I don't like your neck. <clears throat> If, if I start to kind of hurting myself, and if I do that like uh, in a public place, what do people think? 
people think, oh, that man's strange. What happened to the, he, he must be crazy. If we are fighting within a church, that's how people look at the church. Say, oh, that church is strange. That church is crazy. Because we are not glorifying God by fighting within the church. And, uh, but that is not the church. The church that God expects, and particularly Jesus expects, is us washing each other's feet and then serving each other. And for that sake, that God gave different uh, ability to each one of us. And also, uh, back to the verse 6, uh, let me read the verse 6 again. It said this, We have different gifts according to the grace given to each uh, of us. If your gift is a prophesizing, then prophecy the accordance with your faith. Now, here was the prophecy. Uh, from here to uh, verse 7 and verse 8, uh, the Paul going to uh, list the seven different gifts that God gave to us in, uh, for, for Christian to serve church. And then uh, the first things he was talking about prophecy. Uh, now, the word prophecy is, you know, usually we think that the all going to tell the, uh, the uh, tell the future uh, events. Uh, but but then here, I think this word prophecy really meant like uh, uh, telling God's word. And, um, um, you know, some people are very good at it, telling about what the Bible, you know, uh, interpreting what from the Bible and explain what the Bible said. Um, you know, for my case, I, 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 I love to talk. I, I can talk a lot, actually, when I was a young man. My mother uh, told me, Kenji, you are a Japanese man. You shouldn't talk too much because if you talk too much, the girl won't like you. And I said, well, I, but I cannot help. Well, I guess my mom loved to guy like a samurai, kind of like a -talk, not much talking kind of guy, I guess cool guy. But that's my mom. But my case, I'm not that kind of guy. I talk a lot. And, um, but that is my ability, and um, really, I, I can talk, uh, telling the God's word to others. Uh, some people are very good at it, writing the books. Um, you know, I, I know there are several ministers I know, uh, and they are my friends. <laughs> they write tons of books. I don't know why they keep writing the books, I don't know, but they do. And so some people are good at God gave that talent to that person. So. God gave each one of us different talent, and if the God gave you a talent for prophesying, which is uh, uh, telling you the God's word, please do. And then, let's move on to verse 7. If it is a serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. Here the word serving, uh, there's a lot, a lot of things you can do in the church. Uh, see, uh, just six months ago, a few months ago, I, I, my back hurts with a hernia, do you remember? And then usually, I'm the one usually go to church, uh, 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 you know, uh, first. And then I can put the, all the chairs and uh, desk and stuff, and then the table. And then, but then it hurt me uh, because, you know, doing that. And so what I, if I wait for 10 more minutes, I know there's a guy always come uh, about 10 minutes after I come. And I'm going to wait for him. And then he said, oh, yeah, I'll let him do it. He's a little younger than me anyway. And so I said, yeah, he's more healthier than I am. So, but it helped me a lot. You know, I, instead of me carrying uh, too much tables and uh, chairs uh, set up at church, um, the worship service, he comes and he set it up. And then, so what I'm saying is that that's just on the service. Um, look, our overhead uh, images, uh, there's a one uh, girl, uh, she's really uh, giving uh, all the uh, uh, images. And she, she's very talented and make all the uh, singing songs and everything. Um, so that really a good service. I know there's a tons of the things you can do in a church, and every person have a different talent to serve God uh, in the church setting. So Paul says, if it is a service, uh, do the other uh, serving, and then, um, then if it's a teaching, go ahead and teach. Now I have a question. Now maybe this question I'm going to ask about the teaching. This question may may. Uh, how I say, it kind of controversial issue. Do you think, in the Bible, do you think, is a woman 
should teach in a church? <laughs> I, know, I know some of you say, huh? You know, just think about, well, here, Paul said, whether, he didn't say, ume or me, he says, that if the teaching, if the God gave you a, a, a you know, talent, a ability to teach, go and teach. But other part of the Bible seems like the woman shouldn't teach in the church. I mean, is it, is it true? Is it, do you really think the woman is supposed not teach? Well, but if we read the Bible, the one thing I can say is, uh, obviously, uh, the Bible says that the woman to teach another woman or boy, uh, kids uh, seems encouraged. Uh, let me read the Titus chapter 2, verse 3 and 5. Likewise, Teach the older women to be uh, reverent in the way they live, not to be slanders or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husband and children and to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husband, so that no one will uh, meddling the word of God. Now that is a very interesting. Here is a little bit elderly lady. The Bible encouraged them to teach younger women, and especially I love the part like uh, you know, teach about submissive to husband. Yeah, and or how to love your husband. I know those old ladies. That they love their old men, I mean, their, their, their husband. I'm pretty much sure, you know, they, 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 this just deeply fall in love. And the longer they married, longer they fall in love with their uh, old husband, I guess. <laughs> but, but, but the, you know, uh, that's one thing for sure, the uh, woman to teach woman and the woman to teach kids, uh, be encouraged in the church and then, now, uh, but uh, and as for that sake, I think the, the woman to become uh, like a Sunday school teacher. I think it's it possible. I, I think that's okay. Um, but the question is, do you really think what the Bible said is that women can teach freely to everywhere or everybody? Uh, let me read First Timothy, chapter two, verse twelve. I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume the authority over a man. She must be quiet. Wow. Well, well, we just read the Bible. The Bible said, I will not permit you to, women to teach an authority over men. Ah, and women have to be quiet. Wow. What do you think? Well, I think we really have to be careful about how we read the Bible. Now, here in this particular uh, verse, the word authority, the translated authority, that word is very special. I think, you know, there's another word for authority, uh, but Paul particularly used different word here. And that, the word used authority over men here in uh, uh, 1 Timothy uh, 2.12, it's apparently very, very, very strong dominant authority, almost like uh, you really uh, take an entire uh, authority plus uh, you dominate you're like a, you you become like a queen you just uh, you use a man as like a slave kind of uh, authority um, that's wrong well bottom line is you have to understand there's no one is a boss in a church except Jesus Jesus is the only boss we have all all the people in the church it's equal. There's no one's above, no one's below. See, in the, this world, this world, they always say, oh, boss is uh, up and some people are poor, it's loser. This world love to make a ranking that who's better than others. Church is not really same as this world. The man's value it's very totally different from God's value and we at the church we are everyone's equal and as a fact 
uh, you know, Bible said uh, that God made man and woman as a man, a person, which means uh, uh, when we talk about from God's viewpoint, the man and the female is equal. It's not the man's above woman or woman's below. Uh, we, we are all equal. And um, uh, for example, the uh, Bible also said that women to take an important role in the church is definitely it be done. The first Timothy, the same first Timothy, uh, chapter 3, verse 11 said this. In the same way, the women are to be worthy of respect, not malicious talker, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. This particular verse 11 is talking about the church leadership. So women to take a leadership of the church, such as like uh, deacons or like, uh, you know, committee members, uh, I think that's that's yeah, that's possible. Um, but then, then why First Timothy two twelve say women should not take a, a, a strong authority over men? The one thing I can say is this: see, this world, the value is different from us, right? We are all equal in a church. Women's and men's, we are all equal. However, we have a different role. Apparently, God expects the men to take a leadership and women to support that. And I know if I say that, some people say, oh, the men take a leadership. It doesn't mean men above women. That's what you say. No, 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 no. The leadership is just one function. Supporting the leadership is another function. God's rule is men and women, we have a different role. Uh, different functions. We are, we are different part of the body. That's, that's God's uh, order and then, you know, God made us that way. Uh, the leader is not necessarily uh, better or below. Leader is leadership. That is just a function. And then for, for me, that for that sake, uh, just to avoid confusions from the world, I think it's probably avoid using the word pastor or minister uh, to the woman, maybe. Uh, particularly here in Japan, uh, the uh, word pastor had a kind of strong authority in uh, many Japanese churches. Uh, but then, uh, but then, you know, some church use that particular, that's just a title anyway. Uh, use a, a, a ladies, uh, use pastor for the ladies, or I think that's quite fine, or teacher. If, if, if everyone understood that, that, that women have a different role and men have a different role, um, that, uh, you know, for that sake, um, I, I said probably wise to avoid the woman to preach from the pulpit uh, in uh, worship service. Uh, that's my opinion. Um, but all I can say is this, that God do not, God say the woman to take total authority over men. Now that's the same as a man to take a total authority, uh, like a God-like authority in the church is wrong because real God, Jesus, is the authority of the church and we are body of Jesus and we are all equal but have a different uh, function, different role. And so that's my my opinions about the woman's things. Uh, let's move on to verse 8. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give uh, graciously. If it is the, uh, uh, to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Now this is very interesting. Uh, Paul really gave us a seven of the talents that God gave. And here, the uh, one that is uh, encouraging. Some people are very good at it, encouraging people, um, especially some people really uh, like a needed comforter, or need, need, need to be comforted. And some people are really good at it, comforting and encouraging the person to how to live, how to go forward their life. Um, you know, and then, or, or like a giving. Giving is also that God gave some people um, uh, more, more uh, wealth, the others 
and the person who uh, got a little bit more more wealth, uh, they, 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 they could give uh, more. And um, for example, if I read the uh, Book of Act, chapter 4, verse 34 and 35 say this, that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who own land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Now that is uh, clearly that uh, God is the one gave us blessing for uh, you know like a you know a financial blessing, and the people who have uh, strengths to do so, you, 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 you maybe you can do that. Uh, sometimes I think the people maybe misunderstood about the, even the offering. Some people say, oh, we gotta get tithing. Tithing means one tenth. That's must. I think the tithing or one ten percent or uh, of the your income to the church, that is the tithing itself is uh, encouragement. That it, it, you don't have to be ten percent. You can give twenty percent, thirty percent. Do you remember the story of the the lady with the two uh, lipter coin? I guess that the, she she gave. Uh, little money to church, but in the, uh, the temple. But Jesus was watching, and Jesus was so impressed because she really gave, uh, you know, almost total her uh, living expense or something like that. And then Jesus said she gave the more than anybody else. So it is not the amount, or uh, it is not nothing to do with the ten percent or twenty percent kind of things. Um, it is our heart, and, uh, and apparently I think the God does uh, observe uh, carefully how we give uh, and then I think he's, he knows our heart and so if you are really uh, giving you should give and then uh, other things is the leading leadership uh, lead, some people are very good at it helping people to go through difficult time like a coach I will say um, I'm watching the Olympic game and the other day and then you know every almost every athlete have some you know, coach behind and um, you know in the church some people need to go through their life the difficulty or some people really need uh, you know how to live correctly uh, some people are good at it, coaching people or how to become a more spiritual um, if that you can do that and then the, um, if it is a merciful act um, you know this is something like a, they are always somebody the weak person uh, or somebody maybe uh, sick, or some um, you know the with the mercy, the person would really help them to go through the difficult time, and these things that Paul explained, the many of them you really cannot see from outside. It's more like an inside uh, things in the church, but as a body of Christ, uh, you know the, what's inside is quite often very important function than outside. See. Even a person, very tall and big and muscular and very healthy, looks healthy, but if there's a cancer inside of him, and we cannot see the cancer inside of his maybe lung somewhere, um, but then if you have the cancer, and if the cancer grows in, inside of the person, that person will die. Um, see, whether we're healthy church or not, it's not from outside view or how we look, it is how we function within internally and then those things that Paul des described here the seven items uh, many of them are really only you can do within the church and then people really serve each other our church value is totally different from this world and for example the leadership this world the leader president boss they are like above others people and they, they're gonna boss people around but in the church it's different that the leadership uh, or minister for example the pastor we the one have to wash other people's feet the the church we're all equal we wash each other's feet and we serve each other and we love each other and then uh, that everyone have a different role the men have a man's role women have a woman's role and the yeah, that's, that's how the uh, body of Christ function. And let me read uh, today's last verse, uh, verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. 
cling to what is good. Now, this is very interesting, that important, that we, we do all this service and activity in the church uh, to really help each other or serve to each other. But in, what the core reason we're doing this or we, uh, is because we love God. We love, our, we love Jesus. And as we love God and Jesus, uh, that, that we, we love our brothers and sisters. See, the Bible said, how can you love God if you don't love your brother and sister right in front of you? That you can see them, how you can love the, you know, the, the God you cannot see if you cannot love the, uh, the person in front of you. Uh, basically, I think that love is really the core motivator for us to really function well in the church. And then, uh, the, also, Jesus said this, uh, remember the, uh, John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, Jesus said this, A new command I give you, love one another, as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. See, the church is a body of Christ. And as brothers and sisters, all of us love each other, all of us kind of respect each other, all of us serving each other, all of us take their own role and really function well in the church. That's a healthy church. And as, as church is a light in the darkness, the salt on the ground, that the, all the people around us that from the from the from this world this world is a, such a dark place and uh, when they look the church they will see the warmness kindness and, and, and we're like a light and then uh, we're smiling we're, we love each other we're helping each other and uh, we pray each other and that is really great testimony then that is really glorifying the Jesus, uh, the body, and that's who we are. And then um, we, you know, many people say um, you like to really have a really exciting life. I think this is exciting life to really serve God, and um, uh, you know, by God giving a many different gift and talent, and we should live with happily and joyfully and um, really serving each other at the church. Uh, that is one of the very important things we should do. And I think for that sake, I encourage the, the Christian to go to church or local church. And so then we can be a body of Christ. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for your teaching. Thank you that we are the part of the body of Christ and then that you really loved us and then so that uh, we can really glorify you through being uh, the body of Christ, Lord. Thank you. This is pray. Amen. All right. You take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.